Hi, I'm Maddie Anthes. I'm with the Center for Student Success, and I'm going to show you how to use Google Meet to meet remotely with students, either for advising or for a class session. So there are a couple of ways that you can create the event space, and I will show you how to do that. First, I'm going to share my screen, and I warn you that it can lag a little bit when I do share my screen. Um, so when you do this with your students, just make sure you're going slow enough so that you know they can follow along as well. So you should be able to see my screen now. And so one way to create a conference space to meet with students is to go directly to meet.google.com. And so when you go here, it will bring up a page that looks like this. You're logged in at the top. And if you have anything on your Google Calendar that's connected to Meet, it will show here. Um, if you want to create a new meeting, you just click this. And then I'm going to enter a generic class meeting test just as an example and it will create a space here where students can join. So right now, no one is there, um, but it has created a unique URL. So what you can do is copy and paste this URL and send it directly to students. Um, when they do click on that URL, it will take them to this exact page where they have the option to join. I also just want to note that they have the option to join um, with a phone. So if they do not have internet capability or they don't have a laptop at home, then they can join with audio. Obviously, some things won't be as minimal to that, but it's an option if you need to. I'm going to exit out of this to show you how to create the same kind of space, but through Google Calendar. So here's my Google Calendar. Um, I'm going to just create an event. I created one that's a test and um, it's the same way that you make any appointment on Google Calendar, but the thing is there is an option that says add conferencing. So when you do add it, you click Hangouts Meet. It's added here and then it creates that unique URL. You can also upload files and links in Google Calendar. And when you do this, it will then appear in the conference space later. So when you click save, that has now been added to your event. So students who have been added to this um, conference, I'm sorry, this calendar event can click this link directly. And when you click it, it takes you back to this page. So I'm not going to join, but I will go back into the meeting space so that you can see some different tools you can use. So within this meeting space, sorry about this pop up in the middle, you can see that my colleague Gina Morano is in the room with us. Um, and if you wanted to see who else was in here, you can click this little picture of people with the number three. And if you click it, it lists all the participants. So um, it will list your screen share as a separate person. So it's really two of me and then one of Gina. Notice this little microphone next to Gina's face is muted. That's because she her microphone is muting. But Gina, could you unmute yourself and say hi? Hi, Maddie. Hi there. Um, but let's say you have a student in class who's maybe they have a loud background or they're just you know interrupting too much or they're eating really loudly. You can mute them too. Here is a microphone. So Gina, I'm going to mute you. Goodbye. So now I have muted her. Only she can unmute herself. I could also remove her if I wanted to with this button here. Another option is this chat feature. Um, let me go away from Gina's face and uh, show you that if you click this and click chat, then you can have your students participate by typing. So here Gina has sent me the message, hi. Um, this is a good tool if, if they have questions but they don't wanna interrupt a lecture or if there's um, a participation component to it, they can talk to each other. Something to note is that if you are recording this like I am now, you will get a uh, transcript of the chat in addition to the recording. Just something to keep in mind. A few options at the bottom to make note of. We have um, this area that says more options. These, this is where you start and stop recording. It's also where you can change the layout or go to your settings. Uh, but I wanted to draw attention to the stop recording because um, when you exit the screen or leave the call, it does not automatically stop your recording. So let's say I was finished with this and I clicked end call and then I came back to the meeting, that would all record, which I found out in a previous take of this video. So when you are done, make sure you click stop recording.
Other options at the bottom, this says you are presenting, that's how I shared my screen, but students have this option as well. So if they click um, share screen, then you would be able to see what's on their screen. So if you are doing an advising session and you want to look at their pause with them, um, that's a good way to, to look at what they're looking at. You can also have them present for a class this way as well. There is a closed captions option that if you select it, it will type out everything you say, which is really helpful. I'm gonna remove it just for now. I could mute myself or remove my own camera. And then at the bottom left, um, we have some, some options for seeing meeting information. So that's the direct URL here and the dial-in information. Right here, there is um, attachments. So if I created my Google Calendar invitation and I attached attachments here, this is where they would show up. So I'm gonna stop presenting just cause I have a few more tips to share and the lag sometimes makes it hard to follow. So just a few things to know that if you do record your, um, your session, then what will happen afterwards is that you as the person who uh, recorded it will get an email with the video. It will also go to a folder in your Google Drive called Meet Recordings and it will be saved there. Your students who are in the conference with you will get a video as well, and it would go to their shared with me folder in Google Drive. If you created the event through Google Calendar, then the video would also be loaded back to that original Google Calendar invitation. So if you click back to it, you could see it there. Um, like I said, you also get a Google document chat transcript. So anything that was typed out will also be added to that meet recordings folder. Those are my biggest tips for you, but I'm going to share one more thing. So if you have any questions or if you're wondering anything after this, um, I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, you can always contact me through my email. And so I have some information here. The Center for Student Success website is css.tcnj.edu. And there is my email. Note that my last name and my email do not match, but that is my email address. Um, and finally, if there are other issues, I can give general advice on Google Meet from my experience, but if you're having technical issues, the IT help desk information is there as well. So thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful.